Hi, I'm Caleb Coots, the plant biologist here at Tiva Corporation, and today I want to take some time and show you guys uh, how, where, and when to take soil and tissue samples. So we'll start with soil sampling. When you guys are going out there, you want to make sure that you're using a soil probe. You don't want to take your shovel out there and just dig up a hunk of dirt. It's not precise. It's gonna you're gonna get uh, not even profiles. So you want to go online, buy yourself a soil probe. They're not very expensive. Uh, you want to make sure when you're using that probe that you're taking the top six inches of your soil profile. So you're gonna measure from the bottom of the of the probe up six inches and then put a mark with some tape or a magic marker or even spray paint so that you know when to stop. When you're out there, you want to make sure that you're taking it uh, as vertical as you can at a random spot in the field. Don't pick it because you see it's got less sand than this patch over here. Make sure that it's truly random. And then make sure that you brush any kind of debris on the top. Any kind of leaf litter or leftover roots from a crop or something, anything like that is going to artificially change your organic matter and your CECs and can make it look like you have something that's slightly higher than what you actually have or lower and mess up any kind of recommendations you might get. When you're taking a tissue sample, it's going to depend on the crop and the stage of the crop is in. But generally, when you're taking a tissue sample from a young plant, you're going to want to make sure that you take all the above ground growth. And when you're taking one from a mature plant, you want to make sure that you take it from the, the youngest, most fully developed leaf. So like on corn, you don't want to take the newest leaf that's just starting to poke out. You want to take the top leaf that the collar has fully opened on, that it's finished developing and is doing its job. Uh, next, we're going to go to where you want to take them. So on both tissue and soil samples, you want to make sure that you're at least 100 feet away from the edge of your field. You know, the edges of your field can be outliers they can cause your data to get skewed so we want to make sure that we're taking it at least 100 feet from any given edge. From there it largely depends on how you're going to farm your field. If you're going to use the same rate on the entire field you might as well take a composite sample. You're going to farm it that way so you want to know the average. So how you're going to do that you're going to go out in your field and you're just going to take for a soil sample 9 to 12 different soil plugs randomly throughout the field. So you may Take one here or here, and just kind of dot them throughout the field and make sure that you have at least nine to 12. You're gonna take all that, those samples, put them in the same bucket, mix them together, and send a sample of that off to your lab. You're gonna do the same kind of positioning for your tissue sample if you're doing a, a uniform rate, but you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you get somewhere between uh, 20 to 30 or 35 different leaves and when you're out there you're going to make sure that you're picking from random plants each time. Don't pick the plant that looks the healthiest but don't pick the one that looks like it's struggling the most. You just want to pick truly at random so that you get a good composite. Now if you if you know that you have a bad spot in your field and you plan on farming that field differently, maybe you have a big sand knob right here in the center of the field and you know you're going to use a different rate on it versus the rest of your field, you're going to want to do what's called zone sampling. So you take one composite for this area and one for the rest of the field. So you do it the same way you did it for your composite, but you're going to take nine out here outside the circle and then nine inside the circle and make that a separate sample for your soil sampling. Or in the case of your tissue sample sampling, you're going to take leaves from outside as one sample and leaves from inside as a different sample. Now if you're going to be using some sort of variable rate or changing rates drastically throughout your field, you might want to use grid sampling. That's the most specific kind. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you have some sort of GPS marker. You have Google Maps or your iPhone out so that you can make sure that you're in a, a specific spot in your farm on your field. So you come out here and you do it the same way. For this area, you may take 9 or 12 different plugs or 20, 30 leaves, and then that'll be the composite for this area. And you're going to come up here and you do the same thing here. Take your nine or nine plugs or your 20 leaves and baggy that up and that's a different sample. That way you can get samples through, from throughout your field. Uh, so next is the when. You want it, for soil sampling, we want to do this in the fall. You have time in the fall, between the fall and the spring, to make any kind of amendments to your soil that might be done. You have time to make some liming, uh, some liming changes or put out some sulfur if you need it out there, rather than if you take them in the spring. 
And you can't, once you start taking them in the fall, you need to always take them in the fall. You can't compare a soil sample from the fall to one that you take in the spring. Just the temperature alone can cause the nutrient levels to vary pretty drastically. So you want to make sure that you're always doing them the same time of year. For your tissue sampling, it's best if you do that periodically throughout the growing season. You want to make sure that you're, you're doing it periodically every couple weeks so that you can watch the nutrient levels inside of your crop. You can take them after you start to see deficiencies, but once if you're already seeing deficiencies, you've already had at least a little bit of a danger yield. It doesn't have to be a lot, but you've heard it in some way. So if you're really pushing for top yields and you want to be on top of it, you need to be taking samples periodically. When you're doing this, you want to make sure that you do it under the same conditions and at the same time of day. You can't come out, out one day at nine in the morning on a cloudy day and expect your nutrient levels in your plant to be the same as if you took them at noon on a sunny day. So if you take them at noon on a sunny day, you wanna make sure that you take them again at noon on a sunny day. Now, I know temperature is gonna vary as you go throughout your season, but you wanna try and get as close as you can to the same conditions as possible. The other big thing to be consistent about is, since it's important to be consistent about timing, you want to make sure that you're consistent about the lab you're using as well. Pick a lab and stick with it so that you can get to know how their recommendations work, what these levels mean compared to your yield, and you can make accurate recommendations about them. So I hope this helps and have a nice day.